$4,500, I can't even get a pull string? <laughs> and that's one of those things that, no, you got all the rest of this for $4,500. That's what you got. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today, this house is running off temporary power. So this is temporary power pole right here. We are installing a new 200 amp residential underground service. If you missed part one, check here. But we gotta wrap this up and get out of here because it's temperatures dropping. And one thing we've learned thus far is sometimes you rent this. When really what you need is that. We're gonna make tracks, literally, have and will, and get out of here. This is the Electric Work Your Tail Off Pro Academy. <laughs> There's no easy way about it. We're out here in the cold, the mud, you just gotta work and get it done and get home to your precious wife. So, um, making wiring terminations. I like my little Jakari here. Tim's making a racket over there. <laughs> That's Tim. You're good, you're good, go ahead. All right, the white stripe is the neutral. It's clearly identified, which is nice. Basic wiring terminations, get stuff brushed on there. I really like this plumber's brush, actually, because it uh, encompasses the wire. It's quick, it's lean. A lot of this is basic and shows up in a lot of our videos, so I'm gonna spare you the spiel. But I like to use this little guy. It's cheap, it's quick. You could just put this adapter right on your impact, but you gotta finish it off with a torque wrench and get it down to spec. Over torquing, under torquing, it's all bad. Like, like to use my little atomic bandsaw for these cuts. It's a one-hander, real manageable. Back to the Jakari, yep. Is that ground level? I'm bad at uh, I'd go a touch further just in case. The, the grade is definitely gonna stop above the concrete block but just above so as long as we're below that by a small margin in this cold you got to peel this heavier jacket off oh this doesn't want to come on its own i got it get your needle nose on hand yes sir and then tighten wiggle Loosen it up, wiggle it up, and tighten it back down. All right, that's plenty. So the utility company is responsible for the cable from the meter base to the pole, in this case. That's not always true. The utility company sets the rules and makes the standard. And don't be confused, the gold book, which is the book of rules for Duke Energy, AES, um, a lot of them, utilities call it the gold book, is the book of minimum standards that governs utility installations. The National Electrical Code does not have jurisdiction. It is the gold book that matters. Now the National Electrical Code has a standard for electrical residential services like this, but it's not the enforcement and it's not the recognized standard this utility company is. They're the authority that has jurisdiction. They've got regulation, but they are our regulation so we go with it tell you what if you want to go ahead and cut it what we're going to do is slip it up behind this pipe ground yep cutting. yep right up to here and we're going to put come in this bottom knockout i'll go ahead and punch it out and then we're going to wrap around to the top side of this this terminal right here and we'll terminate right there so let me knock this out for you all right this is what we're going to do here folks um you see the struggle getting this wire where it needs to go. So we're gonna be smart about it. These lugs slide out, which allows the conductor to just lay in there. And so we're gonna do this side first and just drop it in there and not have to fight it like we did last time. Alrighty, so our trench path is still here. However, we hit something with the trencher right here. Now that we've dug enough of it out, we can actually see, and if you kind of look at it from on top, you can see the smooth edges 
of a fully concrete water feature of some kind, some kind of pond. The bottom is right at 36 inches deep, which is what we need. So we actually have realized we don't need to crack all the way through it, but the lips of the pond are certainly too high. The two options there would be drill through it with some kind of diamond bit that we don't have, or smash our way through it, which unfortunately we are capable of with enough effort. So Steph and I are gonna fire away at this wall. We were probably still not all the way down on that one, but we took a pause over there while Porf was clearing, clearing the rest of the way. <clears throat> Roll Tide. Dude, Porf is one of those guys you wish you had 25. His diligence, his work ethic, his self-driving motivation, unparalleled. Porf works as hard or harder than anyone else on each and every job site every day. He's got a great sense, he's intuitive, he's experienced, he's skilled in a wide, wide variety of things. He'll get in tight spaces, he'll go up high, he'll operate heavy equipment, he'll do the tedious work. He just can do it all. He's that utility player you're looking for. So you see what we got here? Uh, we don't always give the grounding system airtime, but here's the scoop. You want less than 25 ohms of resistance, ohms, measure of resistance, from uh, to ground. And so uh, this is the system right here that dissipates fault current to earth. Typically two ground rods, those are steel, copper clad, eight foot long by half inch or five eighths, three quarter inch, depending on what you purchase. Diameter ground rods, they do come in 10 foot lengths as well. I've never seen longer than that. And so typically two ground rods in this soil type, it is soil type dependent, moisture content dependent. Typically two ground rods are gonna ground you out in the state of Indiana, and you're gonna meet that under 25 ohms of resistance, probably something like four to 12 range. Um, some jurisdictions only require one ground rod and then an earth ground resistance test to prove you're under 25. Um, but a lot of them around here, universally in the state of Indiana, it's two ground rods, call it a day, no test required. And that always gets the job done every single time I've seen. And then we've got a number six bare copper that is um, from rod to rod. It's continuous all the way up into the disconnect. We've got acorn clamps, football clamps, whatever you want to call them. Um, ground rod clamps at both locations. And then we're gonna hide, to, in order to protect it, we're gonna hide that ground wire behind our riser conduit and slip it into the bottom of that disconnect. The first means of disconnect is a place where the grounds and neutrals are combined. That's the only place. From that point on, they're gonna be separate in every panel, at every switch, at every receptacle, and no longer common with each other. So both of these ground rods are driven to a depth such that they will be below the finished grade and that's for their own protection. And that's the grounding system, folks. Any questions, drop it in the comments. We'll chit chat. My job now that the wires are terminated in the cabinet is to remove this loose fill so I can get this sweep 90 in. This is a four inch um, diameter by 36 inch radius PVC sweep 90 is what's required by the utility company. They want that big aluminum wire, 500 KCML wire to slide right in there. And then in addition to that, we're going to use the fish tape and pull string to leave them a pull string through the conduit so they can tie onto that with a pull rope, use the pull rope to then pull through the big cable and they'll uh, pass it off to a line crew with the utility company that will make the terminations and then a separate crew that will energize this system and de-energize the old system at a later date. So there are four distinct parties involved in this, plus the metering department that will transfer the meter. It's, uh, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but that's the union for you. All right, now it's a matter of fit and finish on this big pipe, and it's just tight. Working down in the hole is just, it's just tight. That's all it is. So um, I'm gonna put a coupling on, uh, not that one. All right, so I've got a full 36 inch sweep. I need to square this up. It's fighting me just a little bit, which means my trench is not quite deep enough. Okay. And I gotta be just a little bit lower to get it all work out. I've cut just a little bit off this sweep. I need another 
inch. So let's pull that out of there. One thing I've done here is on my wedge adapter, I've got it down tight onto the fitting. Then I've got as much of this pipe down in there as uh, about as I can. So it's end of this pipe is sitting like here. So when this ground settles, because it's probably prone to, because it's it's um, excavation right along the foundation when they built this addition so it, it will settle I don't have control over that disturbed earth will settle so what I've got is the ability for this section of pipe to settle with the dirt because it's gonna have tons and tons of earth on top of it to settle with the dirt and not pull out of this fitting leave an exposed wire that's real important it's just one of those things that it's hard to fix you'll look at it later and be like oh, no kill me now so uh, we got to keep digging Okay, now we are tasked with supplying the uh, pull string to the, both conduits. That's part of the service here. For $4,500, we provide a pull string. That's what people would say, you know, for $4,500, I can't even get a pull string. <laughs> and that's one of those things that, no, you got all the rest of this for $4,500. That's what you got. But uh, yeah, we get the pull string too. We give you the pull string too. All right, let's get this string through here. I'll just tie it off to something. Watch your head. Ah. Long and cantankerous. Got it! Um, you guys are going to finish off that 99 inches off the pole. All right, guys, I'd like to send it your way. The one inch? I'd like to send the one inch your way. About five feet. All right. Oh, look at that glue joint. Wonderful. I think I'm there. One second. All right, come back my way. Four inches. That's it. A little too much. There it is. Boom. I'm good. All right, tie it off, never lose a fish. Time for this cover to go on. We've got our self-certification tag in there for the utility company. We pay $22 a piece for those things from the city of Indianapolis. And there it is. Uh, and that's pretty dirty. I'm gonna sacrifice my, talked about not getting stuff dirty, but everything out here is getting muddy. Come on, why have that? This is exactly how this is going to stay. We have accomplished what we set out to do. The fence is going to be out of the way, swing sits out of the way until the utility work is done. Conduits are capped. There's our data comp. There's our power. Nine inch gap is intentional for the bracket. Pull strings are in. Boom. It's a wrap on this end. Let's go check out the rest of the work. We're here at the house. This is the other end of the datacom conduit, right in the middle of this nice, clean mounting space. That was intentional. This is the other end of the four inch conduit, reduces to two and a half. Everything on this end ready to go. The landscapers will take the final grade seed and straw from here. This has got nothing to do with us. So our work is complete. Our mic is out and so are we. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.